Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. What we have here though is the return of two tourists. This is the return of Arthur E. King and Katak from Mercury. Uh, this was a painstaking mission to get them there and not quite as painstaking to bring them back, mainly because we used the monument rocket to get the return stage to them. And that is what they just docked to. And now this is the burn to exit Mercury. As you can see, quite a significant Delta V requirement. And then of course there's the Delta V requirement to capture around Earth, which we will partly do with ion engines. Because we can't do full time warp, uh, it took quite a long time with this Attila Thruster. The Attila Thruster is very nice in that it allows us to do the burns more accurately than the ion engines would, but we can't do full time warp and so it still takes a long time. It's very efficient, as efficient as an ion engine, but still to deliver that kind of delta V it take, took about 20 minutes real time. So here we switched over to the ion engines which we can do time warp with. Uh, to finish that off once we were far enough away from Mercury that it didn't really make much of a difference which one we used. So here we are plotting our correction to approach Earth and so they are on their way. There will have to be a mid-course correction though. We reached a Jupiter window and I decided to use a Jupiter's slingshot, a gravity assist, to get some missions out to Uranus and Neptune. I believe this one was going out to Uranus, it's still called Uranus mission there, though we were breaking apart a previous Uranus mission, the one carrying Miko Gagozov. So we are launching with the Daenerys Aerospike SSTO, a gigantic rocket that uh, we launch on an offshore platform of my making. And so here it is getting up to full thrust. Unfortunately the plumes are somewhat underwhelming because they're coming out of 36 individual aerospike nozzles but mind you these are M1 equivalent aerospike chambers so that's 36 M1 engines which each delivers 700 tons of thrust but up it goes the SSTO is just the conical part at the bottom then the, we have the transfer stage and the mission itself no crew on this one. This is mainly, I think, to return Kerbals back from Uranus. Well, we only have one sent to Uranus right now, so one Kerbal. All right, so we are in orbit and separating off to Daenerys, and of course we're using a nuclear stage for a transfer, which at this scale, and since it's gonna be out in interplanetary space anyway, it'll be fine. Cost-wise, of course, it would not be a good idea, but this is sandbox mode, so we don't really care about costs, otherwise I wouldn't be sending Kerbals to Uranus in the first place. So there we go, there's a transfer to Jupiter, but we're going to have to do a correction if that's going to get anywhere else. Anyway, so there is the correction plotted, and we'll see how that turns out. Next up, I wanted to send some resource scanner probes to Uranus and Neptune. The first one is to Neptune. Unfortunately, I tried to put this on, well, it was still on the offshore platform and you have to position the rockets very precisely in the VAB if you want them to launch from the offshore platform. It's very finicky. So the rocket exploded immediately. In this case, it was uh, Ultimate Collaborative SLS. So SLS with Raptor 9 boosters and the RS-25s on those little shuttle mice that you will have seen in previous episodes of this series. And of course the new Glen upper stage on top. So there it goes out from Cape Canaveral regular pad. Could have used uh, pad 39B, but I did not. So there go the Raptor boosters reserving some fuel for their presumed return. And the little shuttle mice continue. And here we are exhausting their propellant. Well, not the propellant they use for bringing themselves back, though. So the SSMEs are done. And we have our New Glenn upper stage to complete orbit and then get us on the transfer. 
So this is the transfer burn to Jupiter, which will then help us the rest of the way. We have a lot of Delta V in the probe itself in order to capture around, well, and do corrections. So no big problem, you can see. That is the transfer to Neptune there. And so this is well on its way, no big problems. I didn't want to mess up that plot, so I didn't separate it off of that stage just yet. We'll do that when we get to the mid-course adjustment. So, next up, we have another launch of another probe, this time to Uranus. So, we will do resource scanning around Uranus's moons with this, and each one of these launches, the probes are meant to scan more than one moon, that's also why they have so much Delta V. I forget if Neptune actually has more than one moon, but Uranus certainly does. So we would like to make sure to hit as many as possible. And in this case, the launch occurred at a time when we got some sun, so that's nice. Okay, off go the boosters. We actually deliberately waited for sun, uh, judging from that relative inclination. I decided not to line up with the ecliptic this time and just prefer some decent daylight. Of course, eventually we got into night as the burn continued. And there we are making orbit. This time we actually made orbit with the shuttle mice. I guess I made adjustments based on the previous launch. Okay, so there is the plot. You can tell it's Uranus because the moons are vertically aligned. And there is a transfer burn. The music perhaps making it more dramatic than it actually is. It's a very long burn. My poor livestream audience, they have to sit through so many long burns. And that's a, that's a point to remember if you decide to pop in. Uh, the edited YouTube videos are so much kinder in that respect. So we need to do some mid-course adjustments for the Mercury mission, for the Uranus missions, and for the Neptune mission. So we need to resupply things. And so here's a supply mission. Uh, this one for the mirror around the moon, and so we are launching on New Glenn, which I decided would be enough, though not reusable New Glenn. You notice no fins or anything like that. So, yep. We are exhausting... Oh, I didn't exhaust the first stage, even though it doesn't have fins. Whoops! Oh well. Anyway, it'll be fine. So, second stage continues, and our modified, heavily modified HTV will, after another burn with the New Glenn upper stage, be on its way to the moon. So this is the transfer burn. And that is the separation of the HTV. It had to actually finish off the burn itself, but it has plenty of propellant for that. And here we are around the moon. The more we send Kerbals out, the more we have to be concerned about these supply missions. Of course, the ones around the moon are relatively simple compared to the ones for Kerbals around other planets, especially Mars at this point. A lot of people want to go to Mars for some reason. Anyway, correction burn, and then we are approaching Mir. We just needed to correct inclination. It's better to do that from a high position in orbit. And we are docking. Just a standard uh, Russian docking port there. And bump. And trying to find that magnetism. There we go. All right. So, mirror is resupplied. We check that. You can see some of the other supply things. We're doing the mid-course correction for Arthur and Katak to bring them back to Earth. And you notice using the ion engines in this case. And here we are checking up on our Mars missions. As we time warp, we want to make sure that the recyclers on these missions are doing what they're supposed to do and that we don't have any supply issues. So that was your Pops' mission and this Durlaf and Desiski. Checking up on them. They were the first to arrive around Mars. And then we continue with Arthur and Katak arriving in Earth SOI. You can see Earth there. And we want to do some burns with the ion engines as we approach to slow down well ahead of periapsis. Otherwise, even with the Attila thruster and it's about 400 kilonewton thrust, with a vessel of this size, that's still fairly slow. 
400 kilonewtons is only 40 tons of thrust and is 162 ton tons, so it's about a thrust weight ratio of 0.25-ish kind of thing. MechJeb is reading a higher thrust down there, but whether KSB Interstellar, which the Attila thrusters come from, talks to MechJeb properly, I don't know. I don't know if they've discussed the thrust and ISP of these engines perfectly. So anyway, we continue to burn. Uh, once we captured, we just waited until periapsis, it's better that way, to lower the orbit. And we didn't have to really get into a low Earth orbit directly just yet. Uh, though that does mean that Arthur and Katak got a little bit of bonus radiation, but then again, they're coming back from Mercury, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, so finally, finally, we brought our Mercury Kerbals back, and they are safely in orbit around the Earth again. So I did the maneuvers with the little probes headed out to Uranus and Neptune. I forget which one this is, but it did its correction and all is well. That one's going to Neptune. Oh, and just to note, just in case the question comes up, the Attila thruster is an augmented arc jet. That's what it is. And effectively, it just has the efficiency of an ion thruster, but with more thrust, so. Anyway, here we are removing a supply container from the ISS and we will bring up a much bigger supply container so we don't have to resupply the ISS so often. I always try and increase the size of the containers each time because they never seem to be enough. So anyway, this is the orbiting, properly disposing of itself. And we even have the fireworks this time. And, uh, yep, every little bit. Alright, so, this is the supply vessel that I wanted to send up, so it's just a huge supply container with as little extra propellant as possible. That ends up hurting me, though. I decided to launch it on the Unix rocket with a Lex spacecraft. So again, the Unix rocket is a Raptor 9, 9 Raptor engines. And the Lex spacecraft is like a mini starship, just a little bit different in order for me to fly it the way I normally fly things. It's also designed with a launch escape system. The forward pod, the whitish portion of it, you can see the little uh, thrusters on the side there. That's the launch escape system, identical to the landing thrusters on the lunar starship, basically. But because it is smaller, they can be used as launch escape thrusters. There's a decoupler there. So the forward portion can decouple and it has parachutes and everything. Uh, the back portion can serve as just a bare second stage. The tiles at the bottom of the second, uh, the rear portion, the tank portion, uh, actually are a separate part. So you can take those tiles off. Uh, so, yep. There, thereby, this could be turned into a regular second stage without any of the more interesting business. And if we wanted crew, we can put decks in to this area, but we just wanted it for cargo. And getting that cargo out proved a little bit awkward, but out it goes. The little things on the side of it are KW rocketry batteries, that's what those are. Now, we did not make full orbit there, unfortunately. I needed to reserve some fuel for the Lex to come back. And so this finished orbit on its own, and given how much propellant it used to finish orbit, I decided that it probably wouldn't be good for it to do the rendezvous. And so once we did get to a safe orbit, we I decided that we would launch something to grab onto it and tug it to the station. And so we had very, very little propellant left to bring the Lex back. You can see four meters per second. And I dumped all the supplies that I could. Well, the oxygen was taking so long that I didn't dump all of it. Uh, that's the oxygen gas, not the liquid oxygen, of course. Liquid oxygen we're using. This is a methane oxygen system. And note that I'm flying it manually. No SAS, no smart ASS, so that I could allow deviations without, you know, it using the RCS to correct. So I'm allowing it to deviate as much as I felt comfortable and just doing little minor corrections. But ultimately, I needed to correct a little bit more than I expected, and it flipped. But at that point, we were slow enough that it wasn't too big a deal. 
So I just switch to the scent mode, which shifts the center mass. I don't know what shifts the center mass because we don't have any propellant left over, but uh, well, anyway, the, the way it works is it shifts the center of mass. And so it moved that closer to the tail so that we go tail first. And yep, here we go, landing with the parachutes that are meant for the abort system, which means that since those are abort system parachutes, they aren't meant to land the whole thing. So the landing speed is a little bit fast, 10 meters per second or so. Not ideal, but that's how it works for now. So to tug in the supply container, I decided to send an orange, as you can see, very orange, and that on an Atlas V 551. So five boosters. And I decided to launch quickly and then sort of correct our difference with a dog leg along the way. And that proved the bad idea because the Atlas V 551 is so high thrust and also has aerodynamics working somewhat against it. So it all ripped apart. Fortunately, we did have parachutes on this because I wanted the orange to be recoverable. I wanted to dock with or grab onto the container, bring it to the station, and then come back itself. That's why it has the heat shield and even floats, actually. You can see the little floats there, orange floats. And anyway, so we recovered it and we were able to launch again. And off it goes. This time, I definitely decide not to do too many corrections early on and stick close to the prograde vector. Still a little bit taxing for it. But there go the boosters. And now we can fix things. We already started fixing things. You can tell by the relative inclination ticking down there. So, okay. First stage running out here. And fairings. And the centaur stage ignition. Well, separation and then centaur stage ignition. There we go. And off it goes. Really, we didn't need the full might of the orange, per se. Not for this container. The container is pretty heavy, though. It's got a lot of food, water, and oxygen, so I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think we needed the orange, which is designed to land base modules on the moon. So it's got substantial delta V to it. Also methane and oxygen, by the way. I deorbit the centaur stage properly, because we are good people. And also I don't want lag hanging out, just in case I forget to get rid of it and it hangs out as debris. But here we go. I have the container orient itself and have the orange grab on with the claw. Could have just put a docking port on it, I suppose. There wouldn't have been that big a deal to put a docking port there but this works too and we bring it to the ISS the container still has some of its own RCS propellant so once we get close enough it's better to let go of it and have the orange go its own way because the orange's RCS ports are not perfectly balanced for the center of mass and the ones on the supply container R and so we dock very very carefully and there we go and of course bring back the orange so those are the activities for these live streams as the orange comes back home I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.